Okay, in this video, we're going to do kind of a basic run through of the Top Don Phoenix Elite. So, the Elite is a newer tool for Top Don. Uh, it has a lot of different features and functions, and we're going to kind of walk through each of those. Uh, first, we're going to take an overview and kind of look at all of the different features uh, that it does have, uh, the hardware, um, what it can do as far as that stuff goes, and then we're going to walk through the tool as well. So, uh, right out of the gate, you can see the picture here. Uh, the tool itself, as well as the VCI or vehicle communication interface. Um, going to look through here and kind of scan down here. Uh, it does have an added protocol, which is CAN FD, which is a newer protocol being used on a lot of newer vehicles. So, uh, it, it gives you more functionality and availability to communicate with newer vehicles. Um, so, this is obviously an advantage for upgrading. Um, as you expect with most of the top done, uh, top of the line tools we have, uh, you're going to see the topology map, which most technicians really like. Uh, we'll go through that and show you in the tool how that works. Um, diagnosing communication issues, that's really nice because you can use that topology map to really help you see uh, what communication might be taking place with each module or if it's not working. Um, so you can also see uh, some guided function stuff listed here for Volkswagen and Audi. Uh, you're going to notice that with the guided functions, you can do things that the factory tool can do. Um, going to walk you through various procedures, throttle body adaptations, things of that nature. Um, so that's really nice. We also do have ADOS calibrations. Uh, that is something that's added to this tool. So you will need uh, ADOS frame in order to do a lot of those calibrations, but the tool will do the operation itself, uh, manipulating the process from the software side. So you'll need the frame for the targets and whatnot, but you'll be able to uh, initiate the process through the tool, which is obviously great because more and more vehicles do have ADOS now. Um, the pre-scan and the post-scan is a really nice feature. We're gonna go into that as well in the tool here in the video. Uh, very, very, very helpful if you're running a shop, or if you're a technician who likes to do a pre-scan before you work on any vehicle and a post-scan after you're done, which is uh, obviously a great thing to do because it really protects you and your shop from any kind of questions that the customer might have about whether or not you're doing what you say and whether or not you caused a problem that may occur down the road after you have serviced the vehicle. Uh, obviously, you do have the VIN auto detect feature, uh, which is pretty standard on most tools these days. Um, but that is obviously a nice feature. Now we look at the technical specifications. Uh, this tool has a great deal of hardware power. So it's got a very fast and capable processor. Uh, it's running Android System 10, which is one of the latest, if not the latest. Uh, you've got RAM, uh, four gigs of RAM, which is much better than a lot of tools out there. So it allows the tool to be able to perform tasks quickly without slowing down. Um, the ROM or what they have labeled there would be internal storage memory. So that's what it has for storing all of the diagnostic protocols and uh, things of that nature. So 64 gigs is plenty good. Uh, you shouldn't have any issues with overfilling or filling up. And the battery, uh, battery lasts a super long time on this tool. It's excellent. Uh, I've used the tool just super, super tons and not had the battery run down on me, which is great. Obviously, you always want to plug your tools in at night just to prevent it from running dead. So, you can see there's a little bit on the uh, VCI connector. One thing I really like about the VCI connector is it's wireless from the tool to the VCI, but it is wired from the VCI to the DLC or OBD2 port. Um, that's really nice because the cord actually is long enough. You can set the VCI up on the dash. And it has little blinking lights on it and whatnot, which is nice because it's a visual reminder for you as a technician. So you will not forget the tool uh, VCI in the vehicle. If you just have a VCI dongle and it just plugs directly into the OBD port with no extension cable, it's actually kind of easy to forget that in the car. So really a nice advantage there. Um, a lot of tools don't have that. So you'll get a various uh, collection of other things in the uh, in the box. Uh, things, some stuff for VM. BMW F chassis vehicles. Uh, I believe that would apply to G chassis as well. Um, 
but you'll also get uh, some power cords and some adapter cables and things of that nature. Uh, one thing that's really great about Top Don Tools is we typically give you a greater amount of updates right out of the gate. So you get a two-year warranty, which is industry-leading, and also two years of updates, which is great. So that means you get uh, two full years before you have to think about uh, spending any money to update your tool. And we do release updates very regularly, so it's a huge advantage to have that two years of updates. All right, so now we're going to go in and physically test drive the tool here. So I'm actually in the screen sharing mode here on the tool, and I'm remote piloting it. So here we are on the main page for the Phoenix Elite. So we're looking at the main page here, and you're probably asking yourself, well, what all do I have access to? So we'll go through it just one by one here. Top left corner, we have Scan. Scan is a manual version where you can type in the year, make, and model. You also have access to OBD2 mode. Uh, we'll go into that, and we'll go into each one of these, but we're just going to summarize what each one of them does first. Services is a button that will take you to hot functions. So whether we're doing a throttle body adaptation, uh, occupant classification, seat sensor, uh, recalibration, anything like that. I think it's important to remember that when you're dealing with the services menu, uh, there will be times where you will go into a module via the auto scan or scan route, and you'll look for a function like a reset, and you, maybe you won't find it in there. If that happens, go back to this menu and visit the services menu, because it might be found in there instead. And we'll cover that a little bit more as we go through the video here, just so you can kind of learn. It's set up a little bit differently than you might see on some other tools, so keep this in mind. ADOS here is a section that has information on the ADOS calibration process. It also will initiate the ADOS calibration process on a lot of vehicles uh, directly through this menu. So you do have to have an ADOS calibration frame, and uh, obviously Top Don does make one of those. So uh, you need that and the targets related to the specific vehicle you'll be working on and then you can do ADOS calibrations. Battery tester, which is to the right of that, you'll see, uh, that actually takes you to the battery tester function. Uh, if you get the BT Mobile Pros, you can actually connect it to the tool and do all your battery testing initiated directly via your scan tool, which is really nice. Uh, you can also save reports, things of that nature. So it really kind of makes the tool more capable for you as uh, an overall diagnostic solution. Update. That menu there is for updating your software for the diagnostic protocols. So this would be, if you wanna update any of the software related to specific vehicle manufacturers, that's what you're gonna do in the update menu. Support, support is actually how you can let somebody remote control the tool. So maybe you're having an issue with your tool or you have a question on something, uh, our support team can log into your tool and manipulate the tool to see what you're seeing. Uh, it's also possible maybe if you run a diagnostic hotline or you uh, frequently help other people that have a top-down tool with diagnosed, uh, diagnosing cars remotely, you can use this support function to drive their tool from your computer or phone or tablet, which is really helpful, right? Because then you can really see uh, what the person is seeing uh, with your own eyes. So that's really nice. Library, we'll go into that one here and show you what there is in there. Um, essentially, you can kind of look at various resources showing coverages, uh, things of that nature. History, obviously, that's where we can go in and see where we've done uh, scanning, data logging, pictures. And we'll go into each, like I said, each of these menus to look at each of these functions in a little more depth. Feedback. Now, this one is really, really important. Feedback is where you can send any error logs or pictures that you've captured from the tool when something either A, is missing from the software, or B, does not work the way it's supposed to. So if you go in and you find something that does not work correctly, take a screenshot, and we'll get into that and show you how to take screenshots. Also send a feedback log, and we'll go into feedback and we'll go ahead and we'll send a couple of logs. User info is basically your master controls for all things related to Wi-Fi, user settings, things of that nature. Again, we're going to go into that in depth. Now, at the top right corner, you'll also see there is a hot link to Chrome, which is great because you do have Chrome on this tool. So that will allow you to access all data, Identifix, 
and any other things that can run via a web browser, including if you have a cloud-based shop management program. So that's really nice because that may enable you to do some additional things with your tool that you would not otherwise. Um, obviously, you do need to be connected to Wi-Fi in order to take advantage of any of that stuff on the internet, uh, as well as many other features of the tool. You'll also see there's another hot function to get you to that same user info, the little gear in the top right corner. So keep that in mind. So the first thing we're going to do, we're actually going to work backwards to forwards. So we're going to start with user info because this is where you're going to set up your tool. So at the very top here, we see activate, whoops, sorry, uh, Phoenix MDCI. You're also going to see activate MDCI. Activate MDCI is the first thing you're going to do when you're going to get your tool. You're going to activate the tool. And if you don't know about Top Don, this, the uh, serial numbers themselves are actually tied to the dongle rather than the scan tool box itself. So that's why you get a password card and you have to enter it in this box because you're now activating your vehicle communication device with this particular scan tool unit. So this is where you enter that serial number and code. So first thing to do when you get your tool, obviously plug it into charge and then you can power it up and you'll be setting up your Wi-Fi and then activating the tool. Fix MDCI firmware or system. This is something that support may ask you to do at some point if you're having any glitches or issues with your tool. You don't need to worry about this unless you're directed to or unless you're having issues communicating with the dongle itself. Online programming. This is where you will find some online programming depending on what tool you're using. Now on the Elite, these are the brands that are currently supported via online programming. There may be more added in the future. That's not a guarantee, but it is possible. But right now, we have BMW, Mercedes, and Volkswagen. Now it took us back one more menu, so we're going to go back here. Data stream sample. That's a really nice tool. So you can actually save data streams as you are looking at live data. You can save those data streams to the tool, and you can pull them up for review later. So this is a place where you can save, you can find any saved data stream pieces of information that you may have logged on the tool. So this section here is where you can actually enter in all of your information on your profile. So if you want a nickname, you can put that in here. You can put in your email address, all of that information. That's where this is going to get stored. Change password. If you are going to change your password on the tool, this is where you would do that. I'm not going to change my password. You will see this is uh, pretty straightforward. You put in your email address. You send a validation code to your email. You enter the validation code. Then you enter your new password and confirm it and then reset the password. Wi-Fi. <clears throat> this will be the first thing you're going to do when you get your tool is power it up, plug it in, and then you're going to set up a Wi-Fi network. Pretty self-explanatory if you've ever connected to Wi-Fi on any, via, uh, any device before. This should not be a problem. Um, you're basically just going to connect to your Wi-Fi, enter in your password, and good to go. You can see I am currently connected to Wi-Fi. We're going to scroll down a little bit here. Diagnostic software clear function. Uh, if you want to delete some of the diagnostic software, let's say you want to get rid of uh, some of these manufacturers that are maybe not relevant to your market, uh, you can delete those through this menu. So we could delete this one because uh, that's not actually offered in the U.S. So then we can hit hide and it will hide that software. So we can hide a few different ones we don't need. Now, if we want to unhide it, we can also do that as well. You can also remove software. So if you'd like to add, uh, get some more space on your tool, maybe something you don't need. Again, brands maybe that are not offered in your area. So we could go in and actually remove these since we know that those are not offered in the U.S. or Canada. <laughs> now they've been deleted from the tool. So that's nice because, uh, again, if there's any reason why you don't use a specific software or maybe it's a brand that's not offered in your market, it is nice because it does uh, increase the amount of storage space on your tool by deleting that.
So we're going to keep going down here. Now we're in our profile section. Now we're going to go back to business information. Business information, you can actually enter in all information about your specific business. Customer management. This is a function uh, I think a lot of folks could take better advantage of. It's nice because you could enter in any specific customers. Uh, if you're at a shop, maybe you want to spend the time and insert your customer database by adding them here. Uh, otherwise, you could just insert RO numbers or maybe the VIN number and assign all things to that. Um, but if you're a mobile business, I think it might be beneficial to take advantage of this because maybe you service a similar or a, a similar group of customers on a regular basis. So you can go through and kind of edit all of the different stuff. You could take a picture of the shop. You could do anything like that, uh, anything to help you identify uh, that customer. But this is something that's nice because, again, it does allow you better identification and control over your uh, vehicle data reports. Photo album, pretty self-explanatory. This is where it's going to store all of your screenshots. So screenshots, again, are a really nice thing to be able to have access to. And you can see here I took a screenshot of a vehicle that had some fault, uh, fault codes. So, again, really nice to be able to take screenshots on the fly. And we'll go into that and show you how to do that function uh, as we go here. Screen recorder. This is where you can actually uh, record anything that you're doing on the tool live screen recording. So that's nice because, uh, you know, if you have a process that you're doing and you want to document what you're doing, maybe remind yourself how you're going to do something or how you did something previously, doing a screen record is great. Uh, you can do that to record data as well. I Sometimes I'll do screen records. Sometimes I'll do data logging. Just kind of depends on the application. Settings. This is a menu you want to keep in mind because settings is going to take you to the the overall tool update itself. Now, we showed you how to update the diagnostic software itself. Uh, updating the diagnostic software itself is great, but that does not update the hardware or, should I say, operating system side of the tool. There's two places you want to look for updates when you're uh, checking to see if the tool itself needs an update. Check for updates on this top bar here. We're going to click on that. Okay, that's the latest version. And then also system upgrade. That's the other one that you want to click on. And that's going to take you to this menu. And it's going to check to see if there is an update on the tool. Now we can see it is the current version. But you want to do that periodically to see if your, uh, your tool has a system update. And that would be, you know, for the Android operating system and things of that nature, as well as the overall tool user interface gets updated through this function. So very important to go in and check that regularly. Uh, again, highly recommend doing that on a regular basis, if not uh, at least once a week. <laughs> you can also see we can set the sleep time. So that would be for how long the tool will stay active until you sh it shuts itself off or the screen shuts off and it goes into sleep mode. A couple other things you have access to. Now you'll notice this uh, menu pops up by default in settings. This is the about menu in case you didn't notice that. Um, units is something we can use to manipulate or change whether we like metric or imperial. Uh, language. If you want to change your language on your tool from English to any other language that's supported, you can do that here. Time zone. We can change the time zone where we are currently located. T code. This is where you can enter in your, uh, your upgrade. So if you are going to uh, update your subscription, you might buy the T code. And if you're going to extend your subscription, you can enter in the code you get here. And that would allow you to extend your subscription on your tool. Clearing the cache. This is, again, something you can do uh, to speed up the tool if you're getting any kind of bogging down or slowing down. I haven't run into that personally, but that is a function that you can do. Uh, USB connection mode. This is if you want to connect your tool to your computer. So if you are going to connect your tool to your computer, uh, device mode is what you're going to use to connect the vehicle or the uh, scan tool to the computer. This will allow you to retrieve videos, screenshots, things of that nature from your scan tool, just like it's a USB drive. So again, device mode is what you want to select when you're doing that. 
Otherwise, host mode is the mode that the tool is going to be in by default. Uh, restore factory settings. Again, that's a function you may be asked to do uh, based on support. So if support's talking to you and maybe you're having an issue, you're trying to troubleshoot, they may ask you to restore the factory settings. Uh, that would be something you could also do if you are going to sell the tool to somebody else. Uh, I believe that would be your best option would be to do that and essentially erase everything back to factory. Logout down at the bottom there was just for the function of exiting the tool if you want to log out. So that covers our user info or settings menu. So we're going to go back here. Okay, so we're back to the main page. Now we're going to work backwards again, like I said before. So now we're going to go into feedback. Feedback, again, is the most crucial part of the tool uh, when it comes to your experience as a user. It's very crucial that if you have any problems with the tool and it does not perform an intended function, you want to make sure that you log that information here. So here we click on feedback, and this is the list of all of the vehicles where we did functions where there's a log file. So the tool will self-create a log file anytime you're doing something. Now a good example here would be this one here. Now this is OBD. So we use this on a Volkswagen because you can see this is a Volkswagen VIN. We're not actually going to send this file, but you can select your file from your feedback log. And you'll see, actually, when you're looking at the feedback file, the numbers in the sequence here are the date. So 2022, 4th of April, 8th day of the month. So it's good to know that. So if you're looking at your log files and you're selecting them, that's, that's what you want to look at is your date there. Now, when you do send a feedback file, you're going to choose which version, uh, which kind of problem you had. You know, if you have any questions of which one to choose, it's probably not overly important which one you choose. Um, that just kind of helps the development engineers, folks. But uh, nonetheless, I think it'll be beneficial for you to be able to go in and uh, choose one of these to get the information into engineering's hands so that they can correct any issues where there's something missing or not working as designed. Now, you can also add an image. So if you do have a screenshot of something that malfunctioned, um, I do encourage you to make use of the screenshot function when you are doing uh, any operation, especially if something doesn't work or something is missing. Take a screenshot. That always helps the engineers. And then you can also add data stream. So if you did have a data stream that was uh, maybe something weird was going on, something wasn't displaying correctly, you can save your data stream and then you can choose it if you have a file logged in here. So. Once you do that, you can submit your result. And again, this is really helpful because not only will this help them fix issues with the tool or add functions to the tool, but it will make your tool better for you, the end user, every day. And the goal is for you to get the best value out of your tool every day you use it. And in submitting feedback logs, anytime you find something missing or doesn't function, this will allow you to get better value out of your tool. Again, we do update the tools very regularly. So this is a huge advantage if you take the time to submit these. Now, you might want to just do these on a weekly basis if that's easier for you. Otherwise, if you're on your lunch period and you're just sitting at the table eating lunch, that'd be a great time to just quickly submit any feedback logs. And it's not real likely that you'll have to do that too often. But if you do run across it, please do take that time. So now we're going to go back and we're going to go into history here. So history here just shows you all the vehicles that this has been recently connected to. You can see it saves our diagnostic reports when we save it to the tool, which is nice. We can click on the diagnostic reports and go back and look through them, which is helpful. You can share them from the tool or you can open the report. Now we're going to go back here. You can also see that if we save the data stream, we can go in and look at that as well. Now you'll notice when you're looking at these, a lot of the time you have these down arrows. If you click on the down arrows, that will allow you to see the saved data stream data. So this one, we just did a sample to show that the barometric pressure and the intake manifold pressure matched at Keon engine off. 
which is what you would expect. So it is nice to be able to save that there too. So again, in the history menu, you'll have access to that. Um, so like I said, this is a good menu to keep in mind because it's obviously going to take you to a lot of your stored data, uh, which is great, especially if you do forget to maybe send yourself a piece of information off of the tool at one point in time or another. Uh, if you do click on your specific vehicles in that main menu there, it'll show anything you saved under the file list. Otherwise, diagnostic report, we went through that and we showed you it also shows full diagnostic report and data stream for a given vehicle. And they do log it by date, which is helpful. So if you can't remember uh, something specific, but you know what day you worked on uh, that vehicle, you could go back and find it that way as well. So now we're going to go to library. Library here does actually have a number of different links, primarily just linking you to things that you might use for various purposes like internet. So YouTube, Chrome, Facebook, those are just going to take you hot links directly to those sites. Uh, learning materials, that's just going to have some things in there that'll show you how to use various functions. I expect that this section is going to get expanded over time. Uh, you can see special function playback learning is something we have in there right now. But there will be more information added to learning materials in the future. So keep that in mind because that menu is going to be a resource for you going forward. Coverage list allows you to see what vehicles are covered for various functions. And OBD uh, fault code library allows you to look up generic OBD fault codes uh, definitionally. So we could do P0300, for instance, in here. And hit enter. And there you go. There's your basic de uh, definition. And some basic, hey, this could be the root cause. So anyway. That's what you got for library. Now we're going to look at, we're going to skip support because again, support is for remote controlling the tool. So if you want to remote control somebody's tool, you can do it via this menu. Uh, if you want to let, if our support division needs to help you out, they may ask you to go in here. Um, but it uses team viewer, which is a fairly standardized, uh, standardized program for remote controlling scan tools and other devices. So we're going to go into update now. Now remember, this update menu is for updating just the diagnostic software itself, not the overall tool operating system. So that's important to keep in mind. Now you'll want to go in here and check for updates on a regular basis. You can see we've had a ton of updates on here, upgraded software and whatnot, which is huge. Uh, again, they get updated very regularly, which is always great because anytime you send in a log file where something doesn't work or something isn't you know, functioning the way as designed, it's important to remind yourself that you will have the ability to update that software regularly. And because of those update logs that you send in, if there's something not working or something missing, we will try to fix those issues and get that update sent out in a timely fashion so that then your tool will have that function. So again, you can see that there's a connection here between frequent updates and any feedback that you send in as a user. Okay, so. We're not going to do any updates here at the moment, but you can update it here on the bottom right. Uh, renewals is if you do need to renew your subscription. And uh, refreshing is to recheck for updates. Unselect is if you want to deselect any specific manufacturers in a giant group. And of course, you can go and look at any software you have already upgraded in the upgraded software menu. So I'm going to go back to the update. Battery tester. We're not going to go into that because we're not going to do any battery test right now. Um, but you do have access to that. And if you get a BT Mobile Pros, you can connect that to your scan tool. Really nice if you're running a shop. Uh, makes it so you can do battery testing on the fly from the scan tool and save those reports and send them out via the tool, which is, again, a great advantage to be able to give that to your customers. ADOS. ADOS is basically designed to initiate any scan tool functionality for ADOS. You will need an ADOS calibration frame for the target portion of the ADOS process, but the scan tool itself will perform the software side of the ADOS functions uh, via the tool. So huge advantage there. So the Elite is obviously a great solution if you are looking to add an overall capable tool that will do a lot of the service functions you're going to do on a regular basis. Now services. We're going to go in there. Again, services is important to remember 
because a lot of functions where you might go into the control unit on the vehicle, such as an ECM, and look for something to be reset and you don't see it, this is where you want to check if you don't find it there. So a good example of that would be throttle body. Maybe you don't find the throttle body adaptation inside the ECM hot functions. If that happens, you want to go into the services menu. And right here we can see ETS, electronic throttle. So that is where you're going to find the throttle function if you don't find it in the ECM. Now, it's important to remember that sometimes you might find it in both places, which is nice, right? Redundancy is always helpful. So I like to remind folks that if for some reason the function doesn't work when you're inside the control unit via the auto scan or scan function, go and check the hot functions under services and try it there. Because sometimes it will work in one place if it doesn't work in the other. If that is the case, make sure you send in a feedback, uh, feedback report so that the developers can fix that and make it function in both places. If you have access in, uh, to that function in both places, we want it to work in both places. So if you go into any of these functions, it's going to walk you through it just like you would on uh, you know, any other factory scan tool. It's going to show you what to do. You can choose the vehicle that you're working on. If you have questions about what the overall function is, here we're just looking at a vehicle manufacturer coverage list for this uh, particular function. You can see it gives you a basic description of why you would perform this function, which is important to know. Now, we're not going to do a throttle adaptation on this one at the moment, but this is, how, this is one of the places you can obviously do that function. Now, on the top right, you'll also notice that we do have a voltage display PID, which is really nice here on the Elite. Uh, that lets you know if your battery is getting low. It's also good to know that uh, you know, if you are doing programming of any kind, you need to make sure that you're using an appropriate power supply that works for programming functions. Um, that's really important because you need that voltage to remain steady if you are doing any programming. The Top Don Tornado 90,000 is a great option for that if you are going to do programming, as it does allow up to 90 amps of current that it can supply to the vehicle to keep the voltage stable while programming is being performed. So we're going to go back here. Now we have two more options, scan and auto scan. We're going to do scan first. Now scan, this allows us to go in and select the vehicle manually. But the big thing I want you to take note of out of the scan menu is the OBD2 mode. Now, like I said, we can build out any vehicle that we want here uh, that is supported. So whether that's, you know, a, a Volkswagen, an Acura, a Bentley, Mercedes, doesn't matter what it is, but you can manually build the vehicle if you prefer to do that. Now, you can also click the VIN, VIN scan button in the top left. And the VIN scan button will just do basically what the smart scan function does. However, this vehicle, we're just going to start with OBD2. So you can see that OBD2 is really an excellent tool. OBD2 is also great because it standardizes the way the data is displayed. So if you are working on a vehicle like a European vehicle, and you're not comfortable with how the manufacturer displays something like fuel trims, uh, that's a really common one. A lot of folks have. Confusion over the how the, uh, the fuel trims are displayed on the OEM-specific scan tool format. And if you go into OBD2, they're displayed in a universal format. So we're going to go ahead and hit OK and take ourselves into the tool here. All right, so we can see that it has identified the proper communication protocol, and we're able to see a lot of information here. Uh, maintenance indicator or check engine light is not on. You can see the readiness has completed for seven different subsystems. You can see there's three subsystems that are not supported and zero that have failed completion. So this is helpful if you're doing emissions inspections or anything of that nature, or again, like we talked about, uh, really helpful if you are trying to look at information for drivability-related diagnosis in a standardized format. Now we can go ahead and hit OK here and take us into the primary OBD menu. <clears throat> now we're not going to walk through all of these functions. <clears throat> Excuse me. But 
we do have access to all the OBD functions you would expect. So one thing we're going to look at just as a kind of a uh, illustration here is looking at live data. So this is a Volkswagen. Volkswagen displays data in a very specific way in their manufacturer specific data. If you go into OBD2 mode, you can look at it in a more universal style. So we're going to go ahead and do barometric pressure and map or manifold. And we can see and take manifold pressure. Now these are going to get displayed in a not so universal format a lot of the time if you are dealing with the OEM specific display. So it might display this data in a fashion that you're not familiar or comfortable with. So it is really helpful to be able to see it here in a standardized format. So that's one example of, we'll just look at barrel, but we'll also look at fuel trims because that's another one that is helpful to look at in a universal format. So we'll go on select, that'll clear that out. Short-term fuel trim, long-term fuel trim. Two very standardized format data pits. And you can see it's just showing normal percentages. Now, this is just key on engine off, so this data is not something we're really worried about at the moment. But we can see that we have a very specific, non-manufacturer-specific display here. So we can see exactly what we would expect to see on any vehicle in a standardized format. So we can, you know, if you're working on a GM, long-term and short-term fuel trim, you would understand it the same way as long-term and short-term fuel trim you would see displayed on this Volkswagen, because again, we're in OBD2 mode, which is a fully standardized format. So again, helpful and great to remind yourself that you do have this available to you. Now you do have some options. You can do graphing, which is great. Uh, the top-down tools are extremely good at graphing. Now, you're not going to notice the speed being as good when we're doing this because I am remote controlling the tool, but the graphing function on the top down tools is extremely fast, uh, much better than you'll find on a lot of other tools out there. Now, you can barely see the line on the one on the right because we are at zero, so it's setting at zero. You can also combine the two together in a graph, which is nice. So, if you're looking at data PIDs, for instance, that you want to map uh, desired versus actual or something of that nature, Really helpful to be able to graph them together. And you can do up to four data PIDs together, which is obviously a great advantage. Now, you can also go back here. You can click these other buttons and kind of see. So value just takes you back to the values menu. Report. You can save whatever data value. Now they're going to ask you for the mileage here. So we're just going to go 122. Because I don't know what it is, but <clears throat> this will allow you to save those data values. So we're going to click away there. And we're going to click away there. And now we are going to save a report with this data. So if we scroll down through the report, and we'll click on the down arrow. And look at that, it saved the data. So if you have a hard fault or something where there's clearly something broken, you can save that snapshot of data when you hit make the report, which is nice. You can also record. So here's where we're gonna record a data stream. So if we wanna record this for later uh, demonstration, you can record it via this method and this will save as a data stream sample. So that's really nice to have that access there. And you can hit the stop button when you're done. And you can name the file whatever you want. We're just going to leave it like that. One other way that you can capture data is if you drag from the top of your screen down. If I can get it to do it, it's a little bit tricky with the mouse here. Naturally, I cannot. <laughs> there we go. So if you drag from the top of your screen down, easier with your finger than with the mouse, but you'll get access to this menu. Now you're asking yourself, what do each of these do? Well, from the top left proceeding to the right, Wi-Fi on and off, that button there can turn your Wi-Fi on and off. So if you do need to reset uh, your connection to the Wi-Fi uh, that you're currently on, you can toggle this on and off. 
Bluetooth will turn your Bluetooth on and off. So if you're having issues connecting to your dongle or to uh, maybe your BT Mobile Pros, you can toggle the Bluetooth on and off from this menu, um, which is great. You know, if you are having connection issues, I have noticed occasionally if the Wi-Fi doesn't connect right when you power the tool up. Sometimes if you go in here and switch it on and off, then it'll connect correctly. Uh, the little camera, which is the third one over, that's how you can take a screen recording. So you'll see when I hit that, there's a section over on the far right top corner, uh, a record button. So now I can screen record everything I'm looking at, which is great because it saves this in the tool and you can go back and review it for later. Now we'll hit stop. And then you can name it and save it. I'm not going to name it because I'm just going to delete it. Now we're going to drag from the top of the screen down, turn off of our screen recorder. Now we're going to do the next one over, which is actually how you can take a screenshot. You'll see that when I press that, a little camera on the far right center of the screen appears. We can click on that. And I took a screenshot. So that's really nice. Uh, again, if you want to save a specific moment in time, if you will, you can take screenshots. So we're going to turn off screenshot function. Camera can actually take an active picture of what's going on in front of the tool. Which is obviously a huge advantage. Then we've also got the screen orientation, uh, which you can switch. I have not made use of that function at any point in time, but you do have access to that. Uh, brightness is the first slider bar, and volume is the second slider bar. So if you want to turn your brightness up or down, or turn your volume up or down, you can do that from this menu as well. Now, one other thing I do like to point out that is a little bit unique on the Top Don tools is how you can go back from a screen that you are on. You want to swipe from the center right side of the screen. So again, all the way to the right, dead center of the screen, as far as uh, vertically, you're going to swipe from that spot on the screen. And when you do that, you'll see that little arrow popped up there, and that's what takes you back. So I swipe, boom, takes me back. We're going to end the diagnostic session, and we're going to go into manufacturer-specific mode. So we're going to go back again. But that is a unique function that you do want to keep in mind because that's a little bit different on Top Don than you might see on some other scan tool manufacturers. Being that there are no hard buttons on the tool, like on some Snap-on models, you have to recall or remember that everything is going to be touch-related on these tools as a general statement. So we're going to go to Auto Scan function now. And the Auto Scan function is just going to try to automatically identify the vehicle. And this is what most people prefer to do, and it works well on the majority of newer vehicles. If you do get a function where it does not properly ID the vehicle, then I would go back and build the vehicle manually just for uh, verification of proper functionality. Now you have two options here. Once you've auto-scanned the vehicle, you can do a local diagnosis or quick access. Local diagnosis is what you're going to normally choose. Quick access is if you're going to go right into a module and try to do something specific or you only care about interrogating one specific module and you want to bypass the rest of the process. We're going to go in and do local diagnosis. All right, so this is the wonderful topology map that you're going to get on the Top Don Phoenix Elite. This is really helpful. Uh, I don't know too many people who dislike this format. Um, we'll go over another option to, to display data if you do not like the topology map, just in case you're against it. Um, most people are not, but you can see the different branches of the network that each module is located on. Now, you don't want to live and die by these because it is always possible that they're not located on these branches. Uh, you might want to double check your factory wiring diagram. But as a general statement, this is very helpful for basic diagnostic purposes. Now you'll see in the top right here, there's some different colors. Uh, we'll go over those after we do a scan and you can see what each of those does. So the first thing we're gonna do 
is a smart scan, which is uh, bottom center of the screen here. So the smart scan function is going to physically go in and try to talk to all modules, and it's going to interrogate those modules for faults. This is a crucial thing to remember because the other options you have in the menu do not scan each module for fault codes. So again, only the smart scan function is going to physically check modules for fault codes. The other two options that you have, gateway scan, and I forgot the name of the other one, but we'll go back here in a moment, but those are not going to scan for fault codes. Only smart scan will scan for fault codes. Now we'll go into some why you need to use this function or other functions, uh, why you would choose each one after we finish this scan. Now we can see the uh, tools almost done scanning here. Almost got all of the modules. Okay, we've got all the modules scanned. We can see that we have in the color scheme here, green means normal or no fault codes. Red means abnormal or there are fault codes stored. Blue means that you scanned it. Now we're going to go into that because that's in a different uh, process here. And not scanned would be if it had not already scanned a given module. And not equipped is if the vehicle is either A, presumed to not have it based on the attempts to communicate with those modules, or B, those modules are not communicating. So if you know a vehicle is outfitted with a specific module, and when you do the smart scan, it doesn't come up with anything other than gray, that might indicate that you have a communication problem. So important to remember that. Now on the bottom, you're gonna see, we've got the report function, which is what you're gonna do most vehicles. Uh, you've got pre-scan and post-scan you can do. Strongly recommend doing both of those functions anytime you're working on any vehicle, doing a pre-scan and a post-scan, just because it's a really huge CYA maneuver but also good for your shop just for records keeping, or if you're mobile, obviously great for records keeping. So we're gonna go through here. You can enter in information here, and then you can go ahead and save your report. And our report should pop up here in just a moment. So we can see it saves our report. We didn't have any fault codes, so there's no additional detail in any of these. Now we're going to go back here. Now we can also clear DTCs from this menu. You'll also notice diagnostic plan in the bottom right here. Now that is a function that is specific to Volkswagen because in many situations you can try to see if you'll be able to use guided fault finding. So if you do have a fault code and you want to see if there's any additional test information from the manufacturer, you can try using that diagnostic plan button. We're not going to go in and do that right now because there aren't any fault codes. So there's no way to really demonstrate if that's uh, going to help us on a diagnosis since there are no fault codes. Now, one other thing I'd like to point out that's really crucial to notice on any vehicle, regardless of vehicle brand, is this top banner here uh, in the top. Uh, of the screen in the white banner, you'll see there's a bunch of other menu options. Now you also want to swipe this menu because it might go further over. So in this particular case, there are actually additional options farther over. So if we swipe the screen, we see there's other information. We got ADOS calibration and other functions that are revealed in that banner as we swipe it. Now we'll go through not all of those, but we're going to go through most of them just so you understand what they're for. Now, they're going to vary by vehicle manufacturer. Some will have more options up in that banner. Some will have less. It just depends on the functionality the tool supports for that brand. So system list, if we click on that, this is just going to display your systems in a conventional method. So if you don't like the topology and you'd rather look at it more like a conventional scan tool, then you can look at the systems list that way. Full systems list is going to give you a comprehensive list of all modules that this given vehicle could hypothetically be equipped with. So Volkswagen on the grand scheme for this model could have all of these different potential modules. Not necessarily a comprehensive list, but clearly there's a lot more options here than you saw on the last menu. 
All right, we're going to go back another button here. <clears throat> okay, now we've got special function. That's a menu you're going to have on the vast majority of vehicles. Special function is just going to take you to a list of hot functions that you can do. So if you have something that you're expecting to be able to do and you want to just get to it really quickly, you can certainly check this particular menu. Um, what functions are supported is going to vary by vehicle manufacturer. So keep that in mind. But this is a quick place to get to some of those functions. We're going to go back here. Okay. Guided functions. Again, that's something that's specific to Volkswagen. So this is going to walk you through specific functions on the scan tool. Um, maybe if there is a service procedure like uh, throttle body adaptation or transmission adaptation, things of that nature, it will walk you through the process if you go into the guided functions menu and that function is supported. So really a nice feature, um, not something you're going to get on a lot of scan tools, especially some of the domestic focused scan tools like Snap-on or Bosch. Um, a lot of the time, those are probably not going to have guided functions on Volkswagen or Audi. Now, online function, that's something that you're also going to have access to on select vehicles. Uh, online functions may give the tool additional options that it does not have locally to the tool. You do have to obviously be connected to the internet to take advantage of that, um, but that is another function you have access to on some vehicles. So, Anyhow, that summarizes the top banner. Now, there may be other options on that top banner or fewer options on that top banner, again, dependent on vehicle that you're working on. So always just look up here to see if there's additional things you may have access to because you don't want to miss out on functionality the tool has in case it has more capabilities than you would see just through conventional methods. Now, when I say conventional methods, let's click on something like the Engine Control Module or ECM01 address word 01 in Volkswagen language. Now we don't have any faults, but we can go ahead and go into the module. And this would be going into the module in a similar fashion that you would on a conventional scan tool. Now with a lot of European manufacturers, but actually on a lot of domestics perhaps now too, you're gonna get additional ECM information or other module information depending on what module you go into. Um, this information is good to save uh, just for reference. It's also good to, you could take a screenshot here perhaps, so maybe you don't want to take a picture with your phone. You could take a screenshot if you wanted to. Now I'm not going to be able to get it to, well, yep, I am. So if we want to take a screenshot of this particular function here, we could go ahead and do that. Okay, so we save this as a screenshot for reference information. Now we're going to go in here, and here's all your different menus on this vehicle. Again, this is going to vary highly depending on what vehicle you're on. Uh, what manufacturer makes the vehicle, etc. But you do have a lot of different options that you can access through here. Again, some of these will be redundant to that top menu that we saw across the top of the last screen. Um, some of them can be accessed through here directly through the module itself. Otherwise, they can be accessed through that other menu we noticed before. Now, one of the other things that I mentioned was the services menu when we were earlier on in our training. So in the services menu, you have access to things that maybe you might also find in like adaptation or basic settings. So we'll go into adaptation and we'll go read by list. And we can see here's some different things we can do with adaptation channels. And we'll go back here and we'll go to basic settings. We'll go read by list. And we can see there's a bunch of different options in here too. Now we see throttle body alignment is an option in here. But that is also something we can access through the other section of the tool, the services menu. So you could go into the module itself and try to initiate that function. Or if you'd rather just go straight to doing that, you could go into the services menu from the main primary screen on the tool. Both will do the function. Both can be accessed from two different methods. So just something to keep in mind. So if, for instance, we went in here and we did not see throttle body alignment, we would want to go check that services menu because it's possible that it would be found in there if it is not found in here. So just another key to keep in mind if you do run into something like that. But anyhow, we'll go back to the main menu here for this module, and you can see there's a lot of other capabilities for the tool. Uh, again, 
going to vary widely depending on vehicle manufacturer, but it's nice to be able to have access to a lot of functions like this. And of course, you can see very manufacturer specific data. So actually, we'll go back to the ECM here real quick and we'll look at manufacturer specific data for fuel trims and for manifold pressure. So I'll go to function 08 data stream and we'll do read by list. And we will try, well, there we go, intake manifold pressure there. We'll see if we can find Barrow on here. You can see all of that. Now we did not see Barrow listed here, but we do have the access to see a lot of other information here. Now I'm probably missing it because it's probably labeled something I'm not anticipating. And that is one of the pitfalls that you do run into when you're doing with uh, manufacturer specific data. So here we'll actually look at this. You can see fuel trim related data that's displayed in manufacturer specific language. So let's look at those. Now we have completely different data here as far as what we're looking at. Does not line up with what we were seeing in the other function, right? It's displayed differently. This, is, this data means something different to us. We can also see that the manifold pressure is now in millibar instead of PSI. So again, that's important to keep in mind because it's going to be different depending on vehicle manufacturer specific data. So again, if you're doing drivability and you're having some confusion over how it's displayed by the vehicle manufacturer, that OBD2 mode is a tremendous asset. Nonetheless, we do have access to obviously a ton of different data here. And we can look at all sorts of different information, depending on what data pieces of information are supported on this vehicle. So we'll go back to the scanning menu. And we're going to clear out our diagnostic results here. Now you're wondering what system scan and what gateway scan do. System scan is just going to go in and try to talk to all of the modules that the vehicle suppo is supposed to be equipped with. So this is great if you just want to make sure that it's communicating with a bunch of different modules. It's not going to scan those modules for fault codes. That is absolutely crucial to remember because that could completely change your diagnostic process if you do this function by accident as opposed to the smart scan. So again, this function is only for verifying if modules are communicating. It's going to go faster, but it's not going to go deep and ask each module, hey, do you have any fault codes? Now we're going to go ahead and do a gateway scan. And gateway scan is a super quick ping to talk to the gateway and say, hey, which modules are you hypothetically connected to or hypothetically equipped with? So again, it's a really fast ping. It's not actually verifying if the gateway can talk to all of those modules. It's just a quick ping saying, hey, what do you support potentially installed on this vehicle? So again, gateway scan, that's all that that's there for. So we're going to go back to our main screen here. Remember, quick access bypasses the initial menu, gets you into, hey, I want to go directly into a module and do a function. So that completes our summary of the tool. If you run across questions with this tool, you're not sure how to do something, you need support, please do not hesitate to reach out and contact us. We are more than happy to help you if we can. And, uh, you know, we're always here to try and resolve any issues that you do have. So please don't hesitate if there is something you need or you have a question on. Hopefully this video has been helpful and informative for you. 
and uh, you've got a more comfortable feel for the tool and you understand how to use it. So have a great afternoon.